Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we are discussing something that I initially touched upon in a video that I did on TikTok trends. One of those trends was the whole romanticizing my life concept, which I said that to me does not sound so much of a trend as an actual lifestyle choice. It is basically a way of making those repetitive, kind of routine moments of your life a little bit more magical, a little bit more special. And I thought it would be really fun today to sort of explore some tips and tricks on how I personally try and do that in my own life. If you guys have any tips on how you romanticize your life, leave them down in the comments below because I do think that this is a very positive trend and we can all take advantage of it. So let's start. To me, having the perfect day means preparing the evening before. So I am a creature of habit, maybe that makes me a little boring, a little predictable, but I don't care. I like to start unwinding at about 8 p.m. I will take my shower, do my skincare routine, put on some cute PJs, and I do feel like that is a good tip. If you feel like you wake up and you're not polished, you are a little bit, you know, frumpy, maybe choosing some cute pajamas might help. I know that I don't like to get dressed as the first thing in the beginning of the day so if i am in cute pjs that makes me feel elevated and glamorous even though i am still in my sleepwear i also like to kind of plan my outfit for the following day so if i'm going to have something to do maybe an event go to work have some brunch i like to sort of think about what i'm going to wear the day before this way i'm not rushing and in doubt of what i have to wear and then I go to bed. To optimize my eight hours of sleep, I like to allow myself two little luxuries, a silk pillowcase, 100% silky silk, and a silk eye mask, both by Lily Silk, who has very kindly sponsored this portion of the video. Yay for first sponsorship! So if you have been living under a rock and you don't know what Lily Silk is, it is a brand that uses sustainable and very high quality silk, among other natural materials like wool and cashmere, to make amazing items for your day-to-day -day life. Their pillowcases are completely iconic and I do understand the reason why. The silk that they use is extremely soft and gentle on your skin and on your hair so if you have a beauty routine but you still feel like you wake up looking a little scary <laughs> the next day maybe adding a silk pillowcase might help with that the good thing about silk is that given that the fibers of silk are so smooth and soft they don't irritate your skin and they don't frizz your hair so i have sensitive skin and i can see a big difference when i use silk pillowcases i get very overheated this is a known fact to all humankind and having that thermal control function of silk really helps me sleep better and the eye mask is also fabulous you know those very cheap kind of plasticky eye masks that you get when you fly on an airplane well this is the luxurious solution to that I love the design, the piping is super cute, it has an adjustable elastic, it is great if you want to have something on your eyes that is not going to feel claustrophobic because it's a little bit squishy, so it's really comfortable to wear. And again, you wake up without any marks on your face, no wrinkles, it's not that weighty thing that keeps you from sleeping, it's like little angels are putting their hands on your eyes and sending you to a beautiful, beautiful night of sleep. And once you wake up freshly faced with no marks on your skin, no redness on your cheeks and no frizzy hair, you'll thank me. Now for the day after. I like to wake up early because that puts me in a serene and calm headspace that I psychologically know that I have time to do things. So I get up, I get a cappuccino that my husband makes for me every morning, very romantic, and I like mine served in a cup and saucer. 
This is something that is also very important to me and I do believe it makes a difference. Using the proper glassware, stemware, servingware, silverware for the purpose that they're made for. So kind of eliminating that feeling of being in college and drinking wine out of a mug that is not romanticizing your life. Having your place setting with your forks on the left and your knife on the right, a little bread plate, an actual grown-up situation. Like, don't eat kind of over your sink on your kid's frozen Elsa plate, shoving food down your throat. Have your moment of eating with the proper cutlery and you will see that you will feel like your day has been way better than you thought it would be. You know that supporting character that dresses slightly worse than the main? You don't want to be that. You want to be a leading lady in your life. And for that to happen, you will have to dress up. To achieve that, I do love a technique that is finding those building blocks, those pieces that are absolutely essential and having them in more high quality, durable materials that will stand the test of time, that will travel through different seasons and different occasions and serve you right every time. In this example, I am using a silk shirt, again from Lily Silk. This is such a vital piece of a wardrobe, not only because it's a white shirt, so it goes well with everything, but the fact that it is made with beautifully soft silk, the color of it, the cut of it, even the little pearl button details. Just take this from a boring piece into a very luxurious and elevated one. So even if you wear this in multiple occasions, you will be able to look good. Starting, for instance, with some striped shorts and some espadrilles for a very casual but still chic summer look. You can maybe wear it to work with a little tweed jacket, some black trousers, or even for drinks out when you're looking to be more glamorous and have more fun with your fashion, you pair it with a midi skirt, some very girly fancy shoes and you're good to go. Being smart about your budget for shopping, not having just fast fashion or just luxury, I do think that when you have one piece that is really well constructed, really well made and in a good material, it elevates the whole look. And following the tip of having your fashion essentials, I do think it's also important to have your beauty signature look. This does not mean that you need an extensive, very complicated routine, but you do need to find out what are those little tricks that twisting a little bit, twitching a little bit will make a big difference for you. In my case, I do have a few. For instance, in my last video, many of you commented about my hair, what had I done to it, how I had styled it, and it is the easiest thing in the world. I basically curl my hair always. This is just part of my routine. It always helps me because my hair looks more styled than if it was just air dried. And then I use two little clips to pull it back. If I wanted to curl outside, I will push it backwards. If I want it to be a little bit more molded, I will make sure to position it like that. And then I take two little snap clips or French barrettes and I position them in place and that is it. For my frame, for my face, I do feel like it makes a big difference and keeps me from having bad hair days. Something else that I do believe makes a big difference in my look is having polished nails. I'm not talking about going to the manicure every week, but I am talking about just filing them down and applying a little bit of nail polish. In this case, it is a very see-through, very forgiving little pink number from London Town. Illuminating Nail Concealer, this is a great item. It's actually almost done. I need to get myself more, but it does make a difference if you put on rings, if you put on a bracelet, if you're talking to the camera like I do. Having good looking nails is a big must. And finally, another product that I use a lot and a lot of you ask me about it is this lipstick by Kiko Milano. It's in Persian red. It's that perfect mix of nude with brown with a little bit of red and a little bit of rosy mauve that adds color to your face 
without looking that you are trying to have like a statement look. Today I'm wearing something that is a little bit brighter, but that one is great for the office, great for just throwing on and running some errands and not even thinking about it. And I say this all the time, I do feel like these are my tips and what works for my features and for my face and for my hair. You have to find out what works for you. If you have curly hair, it might be a different routine. If you have slightly different colored eyes, if you have a different lifestyle, these tips are kind of universal. So I do feel like many of you will be able to take advantage of them, but do not underestimate the power of knowing you. This is very cliche, but music is the ultimate mood setter. So if you feel like your life is kind of blah, if you need an extra jolt of energy, listening to things that have nothing to do with the mood that you want to achieve, or even worse, hearing sounds of traffic and chaos or neighbors being very noisy will not help. And Spotify is a godsend for this. I love Spotify, not only because you get playlists that are very traditional, like rock or pop music, but you can also select things that are more vibe-driven, like classical garden or dinner and jazz. And this will sort of set the tone for what you want to feel. Whenever I need a boost of confidence, of happiness, or of nostalgia, I'll just select one of my million playlists and that will get me to the place that I want to go without even having to move. And an important tip in this case, I think is exactly this. Choose the playlist of how you want to feel, not how you're feeling. I mean, if I'm feeling sad, I'm not going to listen to trashy 80s love ballads for broken hearts that will not put me in a better mood. So I will go for something way more exciting, way more filled with energy, and that always helps. Something else that I love to do to make my days more enjoyable and worth living is finding that little activity that doesn't cost you a dime, but that adds a little bit of joy to you. What do I mean by that? I love taking strolls around my neighborhood. It's a beautiful neighborhood. I like walking around and just admiring the overall beauty that surrounds me in terms of architecture, vegetation, people, etc. It doesn't cost me anything. I can do it how many times I want to. And I know that when I take that stroll after dinner with my husband, I come back to my home and I feel a thousand times better and more inspired. That to you might be saying a prayer or meditating, reading a book, organizing your pantry, maybe taking a bubble bath. The important thing is that it has to be free. The reason why I say it has to be free is because if that little moment is connected to a monetary exchange, whenever you're facing financial troubles or when you just don't have the money to spend on that experience, you will feel worse about yourself. So make sure that it's something that you can always resort to when you need a little pick-me-up and try to add that on a daily basis to your routine. However, if you do have the disposable income to put towards a more special experience, I would advise you to not spend it all in one thing and try and divide that value into little luxurious experiences that will bring you joy in a more consistent way instead of just a once in a lifetime, extremely decadent, luxurious, high-end day that you will never be able to repeat again. If we want to romanticize our lives and feel like our every day is special, I think that is the way to go. In my case, that means buying some flowers every week, going to my favorite bakery for a cappuccino and the best croissant in town, going to drinks with friends, maybe doing a few shopping trips here and there, doing a massage. All of these things might not cost a lot singularly, but added up, they would basically result in a three Michelin star dinner at a restaurant. So. If I had to choose between once every six months 
and once every week I would go this way and in this whole romanticize my life trend I have seen on TikTok this voiceover of a guy that talks about using your weekends to create the life that you want for yourself or that you fantasize about which to me sounds very sensible because maybe during the week we are striving and trying very hard to create that life and to maybe add those steps and it just adds stress to our routine so using the weekend when you have more time for yourself when you have more resources when you have time to think and to plan to actually romanticize your life might be a great strategy And this takes me to the last tip, which is something that I wanted to talk about, even though I am not a lifestyle guru, so just don't take me too seriously. But whenever I mention these a little bit out of the box moments, many people in the comments talk about how they have always wanted to try it, but never had the courage or say that it isn't for them. And if the only thing that is keeping you from doing something is the fact that you think you shouldn't be doing that, do it. You will never have a fabulous night at the opera with a beautiful dress if you never buy tickets. You will never become a wine expert if you keep buying the same bottle of wine every week. You will not be able to travel to Europe if you don't come to Europe. I mean, I'm not saying that you should spend money, I'm not saying ruin your life to achieve an ideal of what you think your life should be, but if your situation allows you to make those dreams come true, even little dreams, even little things that might seem kind of scary or kind of intimidating, just do it. Life is made of tiny choices that we make over and over again and at the end we kind of build this story of us so if you never pull the trigger to do something that you have always wanted to just because you feel like it's not for you you're sabotaging yourself so promise me you will never ever do that again this is it everyone hopefully you found this helpful or fun i would love to know some of your tips and tricks for romanticizing your life i know there are so many ways of living your life and achieving happiness and happiness means different things to everyone so i would love to know what it is that makes you happy and we'll see each other again next time bye